Hello my viewer and thank you for joining me. This is Kurayatu TV and I'm your host Daniel Lovi. And on our guest list today, we are going to have Samson Waweru, who is the CEO of the Kenya Society for the Blind. He will be telling us more about what roles do the people living with disabilities play before, during and after the elections. Without so much ado, let's kick on with this conversation. Yes, sir. Very well. Uh -huh. uh, maybe you can tell us who are you? Well, thank you very much and uh, nice to be here. Mm -hmm. My name is Samson Oero. Yes, Samson. I'm a young person, mm -hmm. a citizen of Kenya. Yes. And I live in Nairobi, mm -hmm. the Great South constituency. Yes. Uh, I am the CEO of Kenya Society for the Blind. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kenya Society for the Blind is a statutory charitable body. Mm -hmm established by an act of parliament in 1956 mm -hmm. our mandate is to help in the prevention of avoidable blindness mm -hmm. and its alleviation all right to promote the training education rehabilitation employment and the welfare of the blind okay to advise government mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. private bodies on all matters relating visual impairment yes and to awaken public interest all right on the issues that affect persons who are blind okay so we live to encourage mm -hmm a community that is inclusive mm -hmm. and understands the needs of persons mm -hmm. who are blind mm -hmm. and our mission mm -hmm. is to ensure that the rights needs participation mm -hmm. of the visually impaired people is guaranteed all right we work with the government mm -hmm. private institutions mm -hmm. uh, through capacity building strengthening programs mm -hmm. uh, partnerships mm -hmm. and influencing change mm -hmm to achieve our vision. Oh, Mr. Samson, so when was the Kenya Society for the Blind established? It was established in 1956 mm -hmm. uh, through an act of parliament mm -hmm. and uh, it was given the mandate mm -hmm. of uh, helping in the alleviation right. of blindness mm -hmm. and prevention of avoidable blindness. Mm -hmm. Secondly, to promote the training, mm -hmm. education, rehabilitation, employment and the welfare of the blind okay. to assist government communities, mm. by private bodies on all issues pertaining mm. visual impairment mm. and also awaken public interest okay. on matters of uh, visual impairment. Do you, where is your head offices located? Oh, it's right here where we are, Okay. Uh, along my Mahi Road mm. of Langata Road, All right. next to Moy Education Center. Mm -hmm. Yes. I heard that you said that uh, you, you are the CEO. Yes. So when were you elected? And uh, for how long have you been leading till this far? Yeah, I was appointed in September mm -hmm. by the council, mm -hmm. which is the highest decision-making organ of the society, mm -hmm. before I was the chair to the council. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same body requested me mm -hmm. to serve as the CEO. All right. So I was humbled mm -hmm. and uh, I've been serving as the executive director mm -hmm. uh, for the last few months. Okay. So did you have to go for a training or something so that you may be able to be put in place for and ready for that seat? Maybe a training and to be shown some of the things, how you're supposed to conduct, how you're supposed to, you know, go by the protocols and everything so that you may be, uh, 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 you, you may be an ambassador to represent the people or maybe the blind? Uh, I believe leadership is a trait. Mm -hmm either born with mm -hmm. or you acquire at some point mm -hmm. uh, luckily for me i've been a leader all through mm -hmm. uh, in, in school mm -hmm. uh, in high school mm -hmm. at the university i was a student leader mm -hmm. i was the founder of uh, the university of nairobi students with disabilities association mm -hmm. and uh, i also joined sonu at some point mm -hmm. and uh, I believe that these experiences mm -hmm. uh, shaped my leadership uh, skills mm -hmm. and after university mm -hmm. we have always participated in uh, the society's uh, AGM mm -hmm. and uh, after graduation and uh, doing a bit of uh, awareness creation forums mm -hmm. I was identified by members mm -hmm as a person who could join the body mm -hmm. and also board members mm -hmm. i was the youngest okay 
and they saw me as a person who would have brought vibrancy mm -hmm. and proactiveness to the society. Mm -hmm. So that's how I was given the task to be the chairperson. Mm -hmm. And at the level of the chairperson, mm -hmm. it's a bigger position than what I am in. Mm -hmm. So that requires a lot of awareness on governance sure. and conducting meetings. Mm -hmm. So for the CEO, I needed, I didn't need any training because uh -huh. I had been chair for two years uh -huh. and I had gathered all the necessary information I need to know about the society. Okay. But most importantly, I've known the society since I was eight years. Okay. It's uh, what has brought me up uh -huh. to where I am today. Uh -huh. And so I understand it uh, like the back of my hand. As what you've said now, being the chair, of uh, the, 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 the blind of people and living with disabilities in our nation. Yes. Is there any point that you feel that you are well represented in the government and given priorities uh, in as far as you commit your petitions and grievances? Maybe you want to start uh, groups or movements uh, that will help you or the groups that you are in teamwork grow. So do you feel that whatever you give or maybe your views, are they well represented in the parliament? Uh, I believe the legislations that provide for participation mm -hmm. and the rights of persons with disabilities mm -hmm. uh, clearly speaks about what needs to be done mm -hmm. and uh, good work has been done on them. Mm -hmm. There is the Disability Act of uh, 2003 mm -hmm that establishes the National Council for Persons with Disabilities, uh -huh. which is a government body that is meant to ensure that persons with disability mm -hmm. enjoy their rights. Mm -hmm. There is the Constitution of Kenya 2010 uh -huh. that has Article 7 on the languages uh -huh. uh, to be used in Kenya, uh -huh. including sign language and braille, uh -huh. and uh, Article 54 uh -huh. that uh, speaks to rights of persons with disabilities specifically mm -hmm. and uh, most uh, especially that all elective at least five percent of all elective and appointive positions mm -hmm. shall be held by persons with disability mm -hmm. and uh, the united nation convention on the rights of persons with disabilities mm -hmm. which kenya is a signatory to mm -hmm. that also provide rights for persons with disabilities mm -hmm. So on the legislation bits, mm -hmm. we have done pretty much well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the implementation bit is a challenge because mm -hmm. e we really rely on uh, posi positive political goodwill mm -hmm. to be able to realize what is provided for in law. Mm -hmm. So these are two things mm -hmm. that I believe need to speak to each other. Okay. Yes. Oh, wow. That's nice. So. Um and as far as you have been well then represented, uh, do you participate in general elections, more especially the blind and or any other person living with disabilities, just to be precise? I've not said we've been well represented. Mm -hmm. It's only that the legislation mm -hmm. gives us some chance to be represented. Okay. But in the implementation, mm -hmm. we are not well represented. Okay. In the last general election, mm -hmm. Uh, when you look at the constitution, every county assembly should have two persons with disabilities mm -hmm. as uh, members of the county assembly nominated. Mm -hmm. But in the last constitution, mm -hmm. there is a section mm -hmm. of the elections that made it not possible for persons with disabilities to be represented in all 47 counties. Mm -hmm. 29 counties had no representation of persons with disabilities at all. Mm -hmm. 17 counties some had one okay. and i think two counties had the two representatives mm -hmm. so this shows that uh, there is uh, an apparent uh, uh, there is an apparent will mm -hmm. not to obey what is provided for in the constitution mm -hmm. for persons with disabilities okay. but to your next question as to what extent we participate in elections mm -hmm. Uh, it is always said that elections is not an event, mm -hmm. it is a process, mm -hmm. yes. it starts from somewhere and it starts with uh, voter education, registration, civic education, mm -hmm. uh, nominations in political parties, to presentation of your papers mm -hmm. uh, and campaigning mm -hmm. to the time you go to the polling booth to vote. Mm -hmm. 
So I believe taking all these things into account, mm -hmm. we cannot uh, say that we are really well uh, included in the electoral process. Mm -hmm because it's not about that day that you vote it's mm -hmm. on these other days yeah so you'll find there are challenges mm -hmm. for instance in civic education mm -hmm. materials that are made available mm -hmm. are never put into braille mm -hmm. yet braille is a format recognized by the constitution mm -hmm. so it means people who are blind will not access information mm -hmm. as pertaining elections mm -hmm. uh, there is always a problem of access accessibility mm -hmm. for also those who want to vie for positions mm -hmm accessing different areas that would enable them to go and seek for votes mm -hmm. and seek to be heard by the electorate. Okay. So you'll also find that there is uh, attitudinal barriers mm -hmm. that people look at your disability first instead of looking at your uh, personality and ability. Mm -hmm. Because for a leader, you need to have personality mm -hmm. that empathizes with the uh, needs of the people mm -hmm. you need to be a listener mm -hmm. and those are the qualities i believe kenyans should look for mm -hmm. and not whether one has a disability or not okay so definitely those are some of the things i can highlight so um mr samson yes just in pertinent of what you've said in, in matters pertaining uh how you participate in in the elections is there any special unit, even if uh, it's not large enough, that ac can accommodate at least 70% of people living with disabilities in Kenya, that it has been there that helps you guys uh, to participate in the election, or maybe that focuses on creating awareness and how you are supposed to participate in the general elections? Well, I did. I did speak about our mandate as Kenya Society for the Blind. Mm -hmm. I believe awakening public interest is an aspect of awareness creation. Mm -hmm. And this is where civic education lies. Mm -hmm. So as a society, we have that mandate. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have not been given that opportunity mm -hmm. to ensure that blind persons participate in mm -hmm. the electoral processes. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other avenues. I, I, I think it doesn't need to be a special unit, mm -hmm. but it needs to be concerted efforts to enable organizations for persons with disabilities mm -hmm. to disseminate a critical information that is needed by persons with disabilities to participate in electoral processes. Mm -hmm. And uh, if this is uh, done without uh, taking disabilities as an afterthought, mm -hmm. IEBC, for instance, should engage like-minded organizations like Kenya Society for the Blind mm -hmm. to ensure that there is civic education, there are materials in Braille mm -hmm. for use during this process mm -hmm. and uh, that persons with disabilities do, in the media are also informed mm -hmm. of what is expected of them so that they can vie and uh, also vote during general elections. What are some of the challenges that people living with disabilities face during the electioneering process or maybe when you are going for voting on the polling booth and everything what are the some of the major challenges well i believe i alluded to a few okay. uh, earlier on mm -hmm. like, like access to information mm -hmm. in accessible formats like braille and sign language and mm -hmm. so on yes access to places physical places mm -hmm. and uh, attitudinal barriers mm -hmm. but in addition you will find that uh, for us blind people mm -hmm. we are expected to go and vote mm. and the voting is not adapted mm -hmm. in a manner that it will suit mm -hmm. needs of a person who has visual impairment mm -hmm. so you have to go with someone mm -hmm. who will have to vote for you so the challenge there is although you tend to trust the person you go with mm -hmm. you will not have any uh, avenue to verify whether mm -hmm. the person you've tell, told them to select is mm -hmm. the person they select mm -hmm. because as human beings we all have our personal uh, we all have our personal views mm -hmm. and our personal beliefs mm -hmm. and maybe during voting mm -hmm. one would be inclined to their candidates and then they would end up having a chance to vote to have to vote for their preferred candidates mm -hmm. and you as the blind person goes home thinking you are voted for uh, to the extent that you chose mm -hmm. but that may not be the case so I, I think this is one of the things I would like to see mm -hmm. addressed by ABC. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. If given an opportunity, you personally, which seat would you fight for? I haven't thought of uh, joining politics yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I don't think joining politics is a factor of being given an opportunity. It is a matter of you deciding to serve Kenyans. So until that time when I'll have made that decision to serve Kenyans, mm -hmm. I will determine what is the best mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. But I thank the people who I serve now because mm -hmm. I'm contented and I'm passionate about mm -hmm. making sure that we meet our goals and expectations. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Samson, as we wind up, uh, what's your advice for people living with disabilities during, before and after the elections? Uh, at least you are aware that the voting, the registration of voters was extended till the 6th of this month. Yes. Today is the 4th, probably. Yes. We have two days. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would urge persons with disabilities to come out, mm -hmm. uh, get registered, so that you are ready to vote. Mm -hmm. I would also like to urge those who feel they can represent people in uh, elective seats like MCAs mm -hmm. and all the other seats. Mm -hmm. They should come out. Mm -hmm. I would like to congratulate Ruben Kigami for gaining the boldness mm -hmm. to face off with other candidates during the presidential elections. Mm -hmm. And uh, my message to them is that uh, they should participate fully mm -hmm. in the electoral uh, processes because they also affect persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So we also need to inform mm -hmm. uh, the agendas, the manifestos of all politicians and we also need to come out and ensure we vote and we'll be voted for. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Samson, for honoring our invite today. It was such an amazing uh, interview with you. And I believe that at the end of the day, everyone will participate and uh, whoever will watch this video, you will feel the urge and you will feel the touch of uh, gaining the confidence to go ahead and represent you very well because it's not in vain. Thank you very much once again. You're most welcome and thank you too. Thank you, my viewer, for always choosing Kura Yetu TV. I have been your host, Daniel Lovi. Let's meet in the next episode as I will be interviewing Ruben Kigame, who is an icon of peace and a representative, as he looks forward to vie for the presidential seat. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. This is Kura Yetu TV.